And the first pitch is thrown, ball one to Kiki Malloy. Maddie Pinta in the circle will face off against one of the offensive players to come through Tennessee, the home run queen, all-time career home runs leader with the Lady Vols. This Tennessee team coming in at 26 and four on the season, spotless thus far in their first two weekends of SEC play. Two balls and a strike, no strike, and there it is right there from Maddie Pinta. See the body of work that Tennessee has put together this season, very impressive, only four losses on the year, handled Number 12, Missouri, first weekend of SEC play for them. Well, sizable wins against the Tigers. And the Washington native now has three balls and a strike. You think back to that opening weekend for Tennessee and SEC play against Mizzou. Kiki Malloy was five for seven against the Tigers, hoping to have some success against the Tigers here in Auburn and a leadoff walk to Malloy. Well, Maddie Pinta leading the SEC in strikeouts, as you mentioned, Aaron. And when you take a look at this senior in the circle, last year's player of the year in the conference, what does she offer up in the circle? Well, not the start she wants right there, walking Kiki Malloy, but she's got high velo. She'll be up in the zone, spins the ball really, really well. Been hanging lower in the zone this season. Her fastball is at the knees, has been hammering that portion of the strikes. And it'll be interesting to see as she settles in if she'll be able to get away with that pitch. Ball and no strikes to Zeta Puni, the designated player, as Kiki Malloy taking off. And there you see the speed as she steals second easily. A stolen base and now a runner in scoring position for the Lady Vols. That's the danger of giving a free bag to Kiki Malloy to start an inning. You know you're going to see her in motion. That's the 20th stolen base she's had this season. Malloy is such a threat in that leadoff spot, but there is just not much give in the lineup for the Lady Vols, Zeta Pooney, who has had a successful career, her second season in Tennessee. 346 with runners in scoring position this season. Watching third year with the Lady Vols after transferring over from Oklahoma back in 2021. The 2-2. Two -two. When he pops it up, and it's in foul territory, and Aubrey Lizenby collects out number one. That's a huge out from Lizenby behind the plate, able to spot the net here, press the body up against the back of the stadium, track the ball. That is a huge out with a runner in scoring position. Zeta Pooney been swinging the bat well. She's almost a 350 hitter with runners in scoring position. And now here is McKenna Gibson, and Gibson hitting in the three hole. Gibson, who also swings the bat exceptionally well, the third baseman, 374 average. Coming off of a terrific, terrific season last year, you see 27 RBI already put up this year. And a quick conversation from both coaching staff, Mickey, Mickey Dean coming out to the circle, talking with his battery. But what a great job that he has done over his career with pitchers in the circle. Meanwhile, Gibson gets her cues from Chris Malvo, the hitting coach for Tennessee. I think right now the check-in for Mickey Dean with Penta is around the strike zone. We've yet to see her throw a first pitch strike. She's dug herself into some holes. Pivotal out there against Zeta Pooney. 
An excellent point there, Aaron, given the fact that that's an area where Maddie Pinta has been so successful throughout this season. Robert Guest behind the plate, Stephen Gould over at first base, Chris Neighbors. That's our blue crew for this evening. The, that's the off-speed right there, right? Mm -hmm. 55 miles an hour. That's going to be the contrast against the 70 to 72 mile an hour rise ball. So for the first time, Tennessee getting a look at the range of speed that they're going to have to protect. Coming back there with 70 miles per hour. So two balls and two strikes to Boo Gibson. 415 hitter with runners in scoring position. This is where it starts to get dangerous, just knowing the type of execution that you're facing. Gibson staying alive. That one low, a drop at the knee, 61 miles an hour. So you got three speeds. Now you're starting to really get the picture of the talent that is Pinta in the circle. Not only can she locate, make the ball dance, she can be deceptive with speeds. That ball low now, full count to Gibson. Lady Balls have been so dangerous in the SEC play. They've hit the ball really well and scored a lot of runs as McKenna Gibson lifts this one into left field. And now two down. Well, an area where Maddie Pinta has also shown sharpness is the fact that she does well with runners in scoring position, Aaron. She does not give up a lot, even though teams may be threatening. So you're trying to say she walked Kiki Malloy on purpose <laughs> and put her in scoring position because she's better that way, yeah? That's right. <laughs> she just she just feels comfortable sometimes exactly. in certain situations. That's right, yeah. Let's go ahead and put a runner out there. I'm better that way. Malloy, well, who that leadoff walk stole second base, now still standing there as Pinta faces off against the cleanup hitter and Riley West. This would be a big, big one to get out of. You guys know the cardinal sin. You walk that leadoff more times than not. They come around to score. One that is Kiki Malloy, the fastest on this team. You would expect that Tennessee would be able to cash it in. 2-0 to Riley West, and she swings through that one. Two balls and a strike. And you mentioned Kiki Malloy being that torchbearer winner, the first for a softball player at Tennessee. Riley West followed it up with a great act of her own as she was named this year's torchbearer award winner. So back-to-back -back years, Lady Vol softball players with one of the highest honors, if not the highest honor at the university. A pretty cool story the fact that these two young women not only just coming through the same program but at the same time receiving that honor led by Kiki Malloy first one to ever do it on the softball team whatever they got going on at Tennessee softball is working <laughs> back to back full counts now for Maddie Pinta as We've waited for Pinta to pitch them something good. And here, the full count to Riley West. We'll see what happens, and it's Pinta who wins it. First strikeout gets out of the good look there at Mickey Dean, all smiles. As Woolers leads it off. 
the transfer from DePaul, who's hit the ball really well here in the month of March. Leads the team and hits, and one of the two players we'll see tonight coming from the left side. I like Wooler's in the leadoff. She's got pop, she's got power, consistency, a little bit of speed, four stolen bases on the air. Really a well-rounded bat. Willers, the junior out of Davenport, Iowa, in 333 coming into this evening's game. And off the foot of Carlin Pickens, she picks it up, and in enough time as Woolers has retired. <laughs> Did you like that delayed reaction there as it went off the foot of Pickens and she recovered in time? Didn't even phase her. Didn't even phase her. Check that out. Knocks it down. Has enough time to pick it up and barely make the out. And this is who you're going to see dominate the circle for the Lady Vols. Another speedster. That's the reason why these two arms, this is the marquee matchup. It's high velo and up in the zone. Spins the ball well has worked hard in the off season to gain the off speed, to work in that change up, deceptive timing. She'll throw it back to back. She's that confident with it. And Aaron, the success that she's had throughout this season as KK McCreary has one ball and one strike, but hit her from the right side in from the Auburn Tigers. Gonna face off against a Carlin Pickens pitcher who obviously has that velo but she has also been very stingy in the circle throughout sec play as that one grounded over to third base and mccrary is retired and now two away we talk about carlin pickens and just what she's done during sec play well, it's quite impressive during that stretch 35 strikeouts look at that era <laughs> in her four wins. I always look at that strikeout to walk ratio as well. Only four walks awarded during SEC outings. You just saw the usage of that off speed, the ground out from McCrary, roll over ground ball to shortstop. We're gonna see a lot of that from this arm. Notice too, just the length of Pickens, the stride off of the mound. I mean, she'll clock it at 71, 72 miles an hour, but the time she plants that stride foot, it feels like 75. Well, Pickens had the count, or behind the count, rather, to Michaela Packer. Michaela Packer, who has just been a dynamo. It's coming over to Auburn, starting her career there, and now the senior who will be honored tomorrow for what she's done, the speedster, getting in the three hole. And looking for something potentially good to hit inside. And the two out walk to Michaela Packer. Packer, we mentioned, has excellent speed, 59 stolen bases in her career. Former high school track champion. And this year she's healthy, Aaron. And Mickey Dean says that makes a huge difference. Packer taking off just as we expected and in safely for the stolen base. Well, she is the leader on the team. That's the ninth stolen base of the year, the 29th for this squad. Not even close, tag not even near in time. And already a similar situation here for Auburn, a runner in scoring position, two outs. Nelia Peralta lifts this one in to shallow right field, coming in to get it is Taylor Pinnell, and that ends the inning. So Michaela Packers, two out walk, leaves her stranded. Tennessee's second, Maddie Pinta 
Gets her swinging at the first pitch. We look back at that first inning with Maddie Pinta. Three ball counts to three of the first four hitters. We'll see what adjustments she makes here in this second inning. Maddie Pinta and her crew were looking to try to slow down this Tennessee team. And that one sent into right field, and Destiny Rodriguez is safe. So a leadoff base hit for Destiny Rodriguez, and she continues her hot streak. Continues to be lights out when starting off an inning. You know, what's made her so good the past few weekends in SEC play has been those hands. The fact that she can keep the hands inside the ball, you even saw it on that swing. Ball's away from the plate. Hits the ball where it's thrown, sees the ball deep. Taylor Pinnell goes up and chases that one. Pinnell who also coming off a couple of hits from last weekend and that SEC series sweep of South Carolina. And Tennessee coming in third longest road win streak in the country, having won 10 consecutive games away from home. Karen Weekly, the head coach for this Lady Ball crew is optimistic that they can try to make another run to the Women's College World Series, much like they did last year, which was the first time since 2015. But Karen Weekly has orchestrated the success of this team. Remember, this group is number four in the nation. Grounded over to third, they're trying to turn a double play, unable to do so, but a five, four put out. Browns able to communicate here across to the defense. Wooler's throwing it over for the easy fielder's choice. Both of these teams and both head coaches talked about the importance of defense, right? You know you're going to see the offense this weekend. You're going to see good pitching. But defense is going to win you big games. That's the challenge of any conference, but specifically SEC play. It starts to turn into a chess match. You're seeing each other three times within 72 hours. It's always your best stuff. And more times than not, it's the defense that makes the difference. Sophia Nugent takes that one inside. Two balls and no strikes. Mickey Dean shared with us earlier this week that, hey, look, I feel like our defense has played well up into this point. It's been a strength, and they've backed up. Maddie Pinta in the circle. We heard the same thing from Tennessee. Felt like they've played good defense. Pinta be ahead in the count more than behind. Another three ball count. That one in there for a strike. And Nugent comes back to pick up the bat. on out of play and so now full count to the Lady Vols catcher. You can hear Lizenby behind the plate cheering on Penta for this pitch location. You can hear her great pitch. Look at the location of this. It's in the river under the hands of Sophia Nugent. This one lifted high and deep into left field and it's out of here and no doubter off the hands of Sophia Nugent on a full count. 
And that lifts the Lady Vols on the scoreboard 2-0. Lizenby had a beautiful pitch location before this bomb. A massive swing from Nugent, and she hammers a mistake by Penta. This one's elevated, but it's not in the river. It's too far over the strike zone, and it sets up the big bop for Sophia Nugent. That's power alley for this young woman. Nugent knocked her fifth home run of the season. Had a couple of RBI in game three against South Carolina, going two for two last weekend, and here picked up two quick RBI. In the first game so far of this series against Auburn. You gotta give it to Nugent, right? She fouls off a ball. That was essentially a ball right on her hands in the river. Penta goes right back to that location, but misses up and too sweet. And Nugent take it, takes a yard. Julia Kutsuyanopoulos now standing in. Tennessee, who has scored first in 26 of their now 31 games this season. Averaging close to seven runs a game. Kutsuyanopoulos, who is a defensive Swiss Army knife. Looks at that one, a favorable count for the senior. taking all the way. Three balls and two strikes. We saw a good mix of speeds in the first inning. Four batters faced. Really good use of the off speed and the change. We haven't seen as much of that mix here in inning two. It's been hard, high heat at the hands on both sides of the plate. I think back to that pitch against Nugent, set up for something low and, and slow away. Just to keep it away, but a little too far outside. And a two out walk issued to Kutsianopoulos. Do you think, Tiffany, how much our game has evolved from a, a prep standpoint? Right, it's the statistics and the data and the film and the scouting reports. There is so much, so much to prepare these hitters for who and how they're gonna face this matchup. Here's Laura Mueller with one out. A junior out of Chapel Hill, Tennessee. And Mueller who transferred in from Middle Tennessee and She's been a nice lift to the lineup. Trying to keep it near her and Lizenby. Sees the runner stay at first base as Kutsianopoulos, not necessarily the biggest threat on the base pass. Swing and a miss there. Mueller into left. This one, excuse me, center field. And Michaela Packer is there for out number two. Back to the top of the order with Kiki Malloy. Malloy who led off this ball game with a walk, stole second base, and then was stranded there 
in the first inning. And working ahead in the count to Malloy, one of the dangerous hitters in this lineup for the Lady Vols, and that's a good sign if you're Mickey Dean and looking on at Maddie Pinton. Lizenby wanted that when they looked down the first base, and Stephen Gould says, no, she didn't go around. Lizenby is fighting for that call. She's the one that's got the look back there, right? She can see if the barrel breaks the plane of that plate, working for her pitcher to slam the door shut here with two outs. Already 50 pitches thrown by Maddie Pinta, 51 on the way. It's low in the dirt, and Kutsianopoulos takes off and steals second base, so now she moves into scoring position. So back-to-back -back innings, the Lady Vols threatening. Remember, Destiny Rodriguez started off the inning with a single, and then Sophia Nugent blasted one out. And the career matchup favors Penta, and she gets Malloy to strike out to end the inning, but not before. Playing for Mickey Dale, what an honor it's been to be under his tutelage and what he's meant on their career. So the leadoff runner reached on an error. And Talia Martin is there at first as the pinch runner as Isis Tresvik flies out to left field and one down. Up the back. Number five, Mariah Pinto. Just analyzing this field, specifically from an outfielder's perspective, that's where my experience is. The shadows on this field, the contrast of having to shift your eyes to track down a high fly ball, be tough to do. Mariah Pinta. Two great swinging teams. They've got a ton of power. How about Tony Baldwin's crew and the way that he just saw his team came on like gangbusters to start the season. And we saw him down in Clearwater. And since then, they, they continue to elevate and take off. Yeah, they've started hot and stayed hot. I feel like I could say that for the entire SEC right now. What this <laughs> conference has done in the top 25 has been incredible. Look around, just you see Georgia, you see Tennessee, you see LSU, Florida, Texas A&M, Missouri, Alabama, Mississippi State, Arkansas. All squads out of the SEC in that top 25, like you mentioned, Aaron. And Karen Weekly's crew coming in as the preseason favorites, SEC regular season and tournament champions in 2023 last year and looking for a follow-up performance this time around. Well positioned as this group has played really well on the road and we said before 18 game winning streak longest active winning streak in the country right now. I feel like as a whole too this has been a, a season and a year of offense. The offensive production, the numbers, the scorings that I've seen on these games. Even last night, I covered Mississippi State and Florida that ended up being a 13 to 12 win for Mississippi State. You saw it back in Clearwater, the start of this season, the SEC tournament, or the ESPN tournament rather, that opened this year. And it's, it's been from the jump. This has been the year of the bats. Katie Taylor, the pinch runner over at first base for Zeta Pooney, who had that leadoff walk. Leadoff runner has been on every inning, or batter rather, has been on every inning. 
And right now, Maddie Pinto wants to see if she can slow this offense of Tennessee, finding themselves in favorable positions to start off each inning. A lot of work so far for Penta. Eight hitters for Tennessee have seen five pitchers or more. These bats have been going deep. It's a lot of labor right now for number nine. To the Gibson. I mean, 370, 27 RBI. Flyed out to left. Back in the first. The 0 2 to Gibson. And stays alive. There's that off speed. Starting to see that mixed in a little bit more. It's interesting, just inning to inning, the differences in the pitch locations, the pitch calling, just the strategy from at bat to at bat. I can't really chalk it up as good or bad because I'm struggling to find the the pattern here or even what to anticipate, which is a good thing, right? You, you never want an offense to know or think they know what's coming next. And right now, there just there isn't a pattern for Penta. In the second inning, it was a lot of high heat under the hands. We saw a little bit more off speed in inning one. And now challenging more at the knees, pulling the string a bit more. The one two is fouled off and staying alive. But in the process of doing so, Aaron, 64 pitches already thrown by Penta, still trying to figure it out. But do you show too much or, or, or do you feel like Tennessee hitters will be able to time it up a little bit better since they maybe have seen what, what Penta's gonna do or, or still that lack of pattern makes it more difficult? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. It's basically like pick pick the lesser of two evils. Is it seeing a lot of pitches and not picking up on a pattern or is it immediately understanding that, hey, there's a trend here and we're starting to understand maybe what we need to sit and how we need to approach this arm. But so far for Penta, it's been a lot of work through three innings. This one flied out, rather lined out to Michaela Packer, tried to double up the runner, Katie Taylor. Well, Maddie Pinta has shown a trend in the circle from one game one start to the second start in the series. And so you think 0-5 and, and maybe still trying to find her way, but the second time around when she faces a team, she's... 3-0, and, oh, and that ERA drops by about two points. Riley West standing in, eight home runs on the season. I mentioned her success and achievement off the field, but also a great leader for this team, both she and Kiki Malloy provide wonderful leadership for this group. West being one of those late emergences into this lineup. 22 games that she's started. The one, two, and Maddie Pinta gets Riley West swinging, sits her down, two away. And it's starting to settle in. That's three Ks so far for her in the circle. Again, low in the zone. All three of those strikeouts she's collected has been on that off-speed drop. It's been at the knees, it's been low in the zone, and this is a Tennessee squad that typically hits well low in the zone. They struggle on the rise ball. Oh, 
Pinto has had a strikeout in each inning, one of the best or most strikeouts in all of Division I. And Destiny Rodriguez was able to notch a hit, one of two for Tennessee. Last inning. Mentioned the quick hands of Destiny Rodriguez. We saw her kind of inside out, that base hit she collected in the second. You can even see on the take. Lower body fires, but she's able to really be so locked up on those hands. The mind-body control just in the hands alone is elite in this athlete. This one sent in the center field. Michaela Packer is there, and that in. Oh, up past second base, and they are going to rule that a base hit. I think that's the right call. First hit given up by Carlin Pickens. So Lizzie, Liz, Lizenby at first base. Abby Smith at the plate. You've seen the efficiency of Pickens. Last five batters that have faced her have had two pitches or less. Just last inning, four pitch inning. She got herself out of it. So Fouled much of our game lefty Smith. is rhythm, right? It's pacing, it's being in control of the pulse of play. And right now, Pickens is in full control in her own rhythm. Well, it's been a rhythm that's been pulsating. If you go back since March 2nd, 10 wins, seven complete games, seven shutouts in the process, and she struck out 77 during that stretch. But more impressively, Aaron, the fact that over the last 63 innings, Carlin Pickens has only allowed one run. Very stingy. And there you see striking out the batter. Well, coming up next, work and the ESPN app. the top with Anna Woolers. You mentioned the third baseman, one of the newcomers for this Tigers team. Woolers who has been a consistent offensive presence and threat in this lineup. First team all biggies selection. Well, with the DePaul Blue Demons. And since coming over to the Plains, Nikki Dean hopes that Anna Woolers is okay after that one is. She is in pain walking down the first baseline. And that one's gonna sting for sure as she was hit by the pitch. You can hear it. Not fun. coming over to check and let's take another look at it here yeah this is right off of it hard to see there if that's off of the end of the bat or if that hits the side of her hand oh either way that's painful for me just further like, review the call is uphill so not enough evidence to overturn it she's going to maintain at first base very quick review. Coaches are given the option of two challenges. Unsuccessful there, so Tennessee has one remaining. Auburn has both. And now, 
with runners at first and second, just one out. KK McCray looking to try to advance the runners and cut down on this 2-0 lead. A great opportunity here for Auburn. Runs have been hard to come by offensively. Something Mickey Dean said he wanted to see more is you know, them produce. They average just about four runs a game. See how KK McCreary attacks here. The 1 1. Ball 2. Base. Aubrey Lizenby started this off with a single. Bases loaded now with the walk. Two walks tonight. Given up by Carlin Pickens. That loads the bases. Auburn's off. Watch this matchup between Packer and Pickens. Nine RBI on the season for Caleb Packer. And right now, a good matchup for Auburn. Runners, obviously, in scoring position. The base is juiced. There are three hole Packer just looking at her spray chart. The power that she has, she spreads the entire field. In fact, She's the strongest going opposite field. So hitting behind runners is exactly what you would want with the bat at the plate right now. This one on a slow roller in front and tags the base runner and tied, gets the lead runner for the out as Aubrey Lizenby is retired on her way home. So two out now and good defense play from her position, the pitcher Carlin Pickens. Now challenges the hands. This is just a rollover, gets sawed off. Pickens getting lucky there with the location of that ground ball. It's an easy tag. She can get out of this bases loaded jam. Wow. That one high and tight, and it does hit the batter. So that will give Auburn their first run of the game. Straight balls out of hands of Pickens. This, this has just been a uncharacteristic inning for her. Tiff, we've talked about the rhythm, the pulse, the pace of play for Pickens, and it's, it's changed this inning. She's been so stingy and giving much up. We talked about just her efficiency coming into this ball game and how she started off. Now Amelia Leck has an opportunity to perhaps even up this game or perhaps put Auburn in the lead with still the bases loaded. And Leck, who loves to bring the power, top 10 in SEC in terms of slugging percentage. She's got the power, Mickey Dean knows it. And he wants to see it right here. Instead, Carlin Pickens catches her looking. So Pickens gets out of the end. Joining us now. And coach, we knew this was going to be a pitching duel, a low scoring affair. Can you speak to what have you seen from your approach at the plate and what adjustments do you want to see your batters make against Pinta? Yeah, I like our approach at the plate. Um, I think when we're swinging, we're swinging to get after it. We're not trying to be careful with anything. I think we're doing a good job of um, you know, knowing the zone and, and taking some pitches that are outside the zone, some close ones. Um, you know, I think we've got enough hitters doing that. We've got a couple that probably need to get better, but I really like what we're doing at the plate. 
Coach, quick work for Pickens through the first two innings. She gets tested, obviously, in the third. What did you see maybe change for her in that inning? Well, even even from the start, she's just not locating her pitches. You know, we get a couple hard contact there, and those are just balls over the middle. Then I think maybe we're over-adjusting, trying to get to the corners, and now we're missing. Um, you know, that we kind of gave them one right there, and, and that's not what we want to do. And we just need to have a better sense of urgency, quite frankly, in the circle and on defense. You know, we've got some ground balls that, that should be out, so we haven't made plays on. So I've just, I've just asked them to step it up a little bit on defense. All right, thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you. We're crew Couldn't coming in agree on. more there, Tiffany. I, I think that, that that's a truthful answer, and I think that that's what we saw from Pickens is overthrowing. Right, she could see from that first at bat, she gives up a base hit against Lizenby, and then from there, just trying to overthrow her pitches instead of letting them do their job. And Pickens is kind of going to the bullpen and just throwing and making sure she stays loose. We saw her throw more pitches in that third inning than she did in those first two innings yeah. combined. Taylor Pinnell, the right fielder, leading it off here. In the top of the fourth, grounded into a fielder's choice back in the second. The sophomore. As the 2-0 count swings, 2-1. and one. When you look at their SEC series thus far, and. Tennessee has had great success against both South Carolina last weekend and their opening weekend in conference play against Mizzou outscored teams 40 to three entering tonight's game. Right now in a 2-1 battle against the Auburn Tigers as Pinnell flies out to right the first leadoff batter retired for the Lady Vols. And then looking at the way this Tennessee team has been built, you see just four losses on the season after a couple of wins against Baylor. They go down to Clearwater for the Invitational. They face off against Stanford and Texas, two top ten teams at the time. And after dropping to UCLA, that was March 2nd. They have gone on a roll 18 wins in a row for this Lady Ball team. I want to take a, a look at the pitches. Obviously, Nugent hitting a home run in the second inning, and it was these two locations. So your, your clip on the left here was the second strike of the at-bat. Hammers under the hands. You could hear Lizenby congratulating her on that location. Now take a look at where that location was on the ball. Elevated in the strike zone. She misses over the white of the plate. I think she was trying to go back to that same location and just couldn't nail the spot. And Nugent made her pay. And Tiff, that was the inning we didn't see a lot of off-speed. We saw a lot of rise ball, an abundance of the rise ball. And like you mentioned, just as a batter, what your eyes are getting adjusted to and what you decide to go for, there has not been a flow or pattern that maybe they've picked up on. However, we heard Karen Weekly just say she likes that approach at the plate and the way that we're attacking swings. There's that off speed, 58 miles an hour. It's typically low. She'll change the plane, right? She'll challenge the eyes of these hitters. That's what she's known for. Three speeds, she can throw it hard. She can tug on the string and then pull it all together. Full count, same count that Nugent hit that home run. And this time, Maddie Pinta jumps for joy, goes outside, Nugent chases, fourth strike out of the night for Pinta. That, that is the pitch 
I think should have been thrown, could have been thrown after that foul ball when she went yard. It's set up perfectly. You see her chase, wave at that low and slow. Beautiful spot there. Pinta now with 130 strikeouts on the season. Mackenzie Gibson, first pitch swinging, knocks it foul. Correction, Julia Kutsianopoulos is at the plate. This is the type of outing that we expected to see, Aaron, given the fact that these are two outstanding pitchers. Maybe not A plus one stuff, but even when they bring just their A game, it's still pretty dynamic. And Maddie Pinta, who is settled in just a little bit more, and finding a little bit of a groove. Working ahead in the count here against Kutsianopoulos. Yeah, we knew this this matchup was going to be close. With these two arms going head to head, even just the depth of their pitching staff as well. The grounder over to short, and Peralta handles it. And a one, two, three inning for Menas now. And coach, with the way that your players have approached offensively, you wanted to see them be more aggressive and attack early. What? Have you thought thus far of the way they swung the bats? Well, I think they've done a good job because they, 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 you know, when they're attacking, they force pitchers to move the ball around. And she was trying to move the ball around. Uh, she just hit a couple of us last inning, and and uh, and we, we got a run out of it. So, you know, now we're going to be facing a pitcher a little bit different. We need to force her to bring the ball down a little bit. And uh, Coach, my excuse me. Pinta in the circle. Um, so much dynamics, the fact that she's able to hit three speeds, locations. What has been the strategy for her against Tennessee? Lord, they're tough. I mean, that lineup's tough. So we're just trying to keep them off balance, you know, and uh, hopefully keep them guessing. And, and uh, you know, she's doing a good job right now of hitting her spots. And, uh, we just got to keep them guessing. They've got a, they've got a good, strong lineup, and uh, we've made some good plays in behind her. So, uh we just hope that continues and give our offense a chance here to win this thing. Well, thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate the time. Thank you, War Eagle. And it, and it looks like there was a party going on. And But did you see Isis, Tresvik, or, or, or some of the players in the background make sure they got the hat back up in time from Coach Dean? They, they were having a great time while he was doing that interview. Meanwhile, we'll introduce you to the new pitcher in the circle for Tennessee, and it's Peyton Gottschall. It's a one-two punch when you think about this pitching staff for Karen Weekly's crew. Carlin Pickens start off this game. Peggy Gottschall coming in relief. This is a much different look than Pickens. This is all about spin, deceptive spin, tight revolutions on the softball. She's added an off speed, so she'll also mix with a lot of different looks. But she'll be aggressive in the zone. She's going to come at you early. You're already seeing it, an 0-2 count, first batter she faces. The different look indeed, and 0.05 ERA, fifth best in the SEC, leading in a number of different categories, or among the best up there, Peyton Gottschall. Picked up a save last weekend, and one of the series outings against South Carolina. Got a win against the Gamecocks as well to start in the circle. And here, starting off this inning, 2 2 count to Isis Tresvik. The roller over to Mueller. Mueller. And the 6 3 put out. Laura Mueller who took over for Bella Fall, the freshman who started off at shortstop, and Mueller, who was a pickup in addition to the Lady Balls this season. She's just come on and just asserted herself as the shortstop in the middle infield, and then, of course, at the plate as well.
Mariah Pinta, the younger sister of pitcher Maddie Pinta, stands in now. Pinta, who grounded into a double play back in the second inning. And we ask Coach Dean about maybe the difference in personality that they've seen from Mariah and Maddie. He says, well, you know, not much different from Maddie when she came in as a freshman. He said some, some similarities there. And this Somebody's is what it was like in the Pinta household. You see, you see the, the younger Pinta there with really with cool glasses, too. <laughs> At least they have the glasses thing going on. Yeah. It's always interesting to hear the sisters' dynamic, right? There's been some very iconic sister duos that have come through our sport, and each of them have a very unique dynamic. They all do. This went in on the hands. Mueller is there once again. She collects the second out. <laughs> When you look at the pace of play of Peyton Gottschall, she can work pretty quickly in the circle. They say the better or the faster she works, the better that she is. And she made quick work of that inning and tells you so much. I don't think Beth Serena is going to ever live down her laying on the ground like that, <laughs> but what an iconic moment, right? Oh Only on Mike Up Monday. Coach Baldwin calling us, hey, TV people. Sorry, I turned <laughs> off my mic, TV people. I love that. <laughs> this group has played so well. We're talking about it as Georgia Bulldogs, 5-1 and one in conference play. Both they and Florida are 5-1 and one on the season. You think about LSU and the hot start that they were off to, 24-0 since then. They've cooled off a little bit, but definitely in the hunt. Arkansas and even 500 in conference play. You saw Mississippi State last night take on the Gators as it's a base hit. And in the right field is Laura Mueller. Boy, last night's game against Mississippi State and Florida was wild. <laughs> wild, wild, wild. And there, there's been, I mean, look at these numbers. These are the types of offenses that we've seen all over the nation this top record across the nation OU and Texas big 12 up at the top Georgia putting up a heck of a performance if you forecast the future though I mean that's all SEC next year it's things are gonna get really interesting mm -hmm. I don't know if you're excited but I I for oh, sure yeah. am mm -hmm. having played at Oklahoma I'll be looking forward to seeing that shift and what that does for our sport. All good things. Love's Field, a brand new $50 million facility now in Norman. When I think about Sydney Kuma and Jada Kearney, just some of the players for Georgia, where you look at Tony Baldwin's team, again, got to see him back in February, but they know how to put up offense. They yeah. know how to hit the ball exceptionally well and it's going to be a fun race to the SEC tournament which is going to be hosted by the Auburn Tigers right there at J.B. Moore Field. This is a beautiful stadium, green, plush, such a beautiful camp campus. That was one of my, my favorite trips going to Auburn, get to tour that facility. It's amazing what this program has done just in the past 10 years, the updates to this stadium. Our sport's moving, it's growing. Love to see it. And Lizenby throwing out the runner at second base. Maddie Pinta was certainly pumped up after that to get Laura Mueller out trying to steal. Another look at it here. Yeah, trying to grab another 60 feet. That would have been her seventh stolen base of the year, but Lizenby had other plans. She's all jacked up. We've heard her chirp a lot behind the plate. She's a lively athlete, very engaged in the game, a vocal leader as a catcher. Well, feeding off of one another, the junior who's had experience behind the plate 
caught most of the games last year. 31 games started behind the dish. Familiar with Maddie Penta, her style, and much of this pitching staff. But right now, feeding off the energy, understanding the fact that you're just one run down to the fourth ranked team in the country. They're on your home field. And great plays like that help give your team hope, optimism, confidence, and Zeta Pooney is at the plate. Two balls and a strike to Pooney. You know, this had to be something that Lizenby was anticipating, right? Tennessee almost double the amount of stolen bases that Auburn has. They run a lot. It's a lot of speed on this team. Something that that arm had to prep for. But you're, you're so right, Tiffany, to put this in perspective. You're on your home turf. You've got a great crowd turnout. You're facing one of the best teams in the nation, number four right now in the nation. And you're within a one-run deficit. Within striking, one swing could change this game. And what do we mean for... Auburn, they picked up wins against Missouri and Arkansas, both teams ranked, but they dropped those weekend series here. They could set the tone against Tennessee. They were able to come from behind after being swept last weekend against Texas A&M. This one into the right center gap, and Zeta Pooney is aboard with a two-out base hit. Well, how important is that thrown out at second base from Lizenby? Could have been a run right there. Runner in scoring position with the speed of Mueller. Easily could have been an RBI opportunity there for Zeta Pooney. Kenna okay, Gibson, 0 for 2 today. Tennessee just... Four hits on the evening. Maddie Pinta readies. The hundredth pitch on the way from Pinta. Slow, ball one. Well, Pinta. SEC Pitcher of the Year a season ago. Back-to-back, -back, first team, all-conference selection. And became the winningest pitcher in program history in that series versus Arkansas. The her 68th win of her career. Anticipating what we're potentially going to see the rest of this series, both in the circle and offensively for both of these teams. A lot of depth in the pin for Auburn. You see Pinta in the circle right now. You've got Lowe, who's a different change of pace for this team. Widra again up in the zone. A lot of east and west movement from the rest of this staff. So there's a lot of changes in looks for Auburn in the circle. We've already gotten to see Gottschall stepping in for Tennessee. It's have been hard to come by runs as well. A 2-1 ball game. Carlin Pickens started it off in the circle for Tennessee. We thought we'd see a pitcher's duel. It has been some of that. Peyton Gottschall has come on in relief. She had a nine-pitch inning coming into the fourth. And this is a Tennessee staff who feels like they're deep. They got it going on, and they've got some arms that they can throw your way in addition to the offense that they put up. They're trying to keep rolling, having won 18 in a row. It's just the contrast between Pickens and Gottschall alone. Those are the two arms we've already seen in this game. The high heat of Pickens, the incredible new addition of the changeup for her. 
And then you see Gotchel come in, the pairing, the contrast of deceptive spin. I mean, look at that late life on a screwball that works away from Wallers. Just between those two arms, you're going to do a lot of damage. You're going to win a lot of ball games. And the grounder over the shortstop, Laura Mila retires the first batter. That was Abby Smith, excuse me. But yeah, the, the depth doesn't stop there, right? It keeps going. When you have that type of arsenal to dip into in the bullpen, paired with what this offense has done all season long, paired with what this defense has done all season long, and then you drill down further, the leadership, the seniors of this team, the speed, no wonder. They've only dropped four games this entire season, and through SEC play, they have just been so dominant. Coming in 6-0, and oh, Peyton Gottschall has been a part of that. Three weeks in a row, Tennessee has garnered SEC Pitcher of the Week. She is the current Pitcher of the Week after picking up two wins and a save. Didn't allow a single run to score over 12 innings of work. And that series against... South Carolina. Midweek win as well. Now Anna Woolers back to the top. Facing a one-two count. Schultz throws it high. Ball two. down the pipe and Gottschall catches Wooler's looking you know Peyton Gottschall has been among the nation's strikeout leaders throughout her career because she does this I don't know what Wooler's is looking for but that one couldn't have been better if it were on a tee right down Broadway first strikeout of the evening for Gottschall Two down, and here's KK McCreary. You to watch Sophia Nugent work behind the plate. Just her agility, her ability to frame. I mean, she's in constant work mode for her arms. We talk so much about pitchers, Tiffany. We talk so much about arms and what they bring, but we so often forget to give the love to the receivers, the ones that are behind the dish, making the whole thing come to life. We saw the arm from Aubrey Lizenby, Sophia Nugent, who's a new addition to the program, coming over from OU, and her presence behind the plate as you just mentioned is, is priceless and, and, and the fact that there is so much depth for Karen Weekly and her team, right? So you, you've got Nugent who obviously very comfortable behind the plate but you've also got Julia Kutsuyanopoulos who she called a defensive savant who played behind the dish last year, spelled Nugent last weekend in that South Carolina series, and this one into right field, hits the wall, and a, going around trying to get three and does so as KK McCrary says, hold up, wait a minute, you see it. The two out triple. Her first triple of the season. Now, if you're gonna say that one liner, you better sell it, Tim. Hold up, wait a minute. Let me put some juice up in it. That sucker was smashed. It's one of the hardest hit balls we've seen from Auburn today. I think this is the spark really that Auburn's looking for. Home turf, you wanna jazz up the crowd, you wanna feel some momentum. And with two outs, Auburn's got a chance to tie up this ball game. More important there is that was the first extra base hit for Auburn today, just their second 
Overall now, Michaela Packer has the tying run. 60 feet away. Pitch, break two. And the opportunity for both of these teams to try to make good. They've had runners in scoring position. And not going across in there. Second strikeout of the inning, second strikeout of the game for Peyton Gottschall, an important one. That he upsetting Alabama. Hello, there's a lot going on this weekend. Yeah, the potential tying run came to the plate. Crimson Tide just fell short. Rachel Lawson's crew was able to get that win against Roll Tide Roll. First time since 2019. Riley West, who is struck out both times up. Rolling the dirt, two balls and a strike. Well, this is a point in a ball game for Tennessee where you can't stress the importance enough of the insurance run. Knowing that this is a, a one swing ball game, truly. You got to continue to put the pedal to the floor here with six outs to work with. One thing that Tennessee has done well tonight is they've been successful in getting the leadoff runner on in all but one of the innings up until this point, Riley West. With the hitter's count, Maddie Pinta pitches. And for strike as West swings through that one. Full count now. And Mickey Dean told us this week, Pinta has to put hitters away with two strikes. It's the route that she has to get there that I think is the one area of improvement for Penta tonight. There's been a lot of full counts. You saw nine of those hitters beyond the three ball counts. West connecting there and a solo shot in the left center field on a full count once again. That's the second home run night off of a full count off of Maddie Pinta and Riley West gives that insurance her ninth home run of the season. That's a big run for Tennessee late in this ball game. It's been a close one for the past six innings, five innings rather. It been quiet now for three of those five. They haven't scored since the second. The home run from Sophia Nugent was the last time. Riley West snagging another insurance run late in this ball game. That's a big deal for Tennessee. On the road, winners of 10 straight away from home. And Riley West Helps to give the Lady Vols breathing room for the time being. Destiny Rodriguez fouls that one off. Rodriguez, who singled and flied out to center her last time up. Remember, we talked about her in the open as a feature player in the lineup because of how well she's been playing during SEC play.
Pinta gets the signal, the pitch. And this one lifted into the outfield as well. Packer is underneath it and one down. Well, you're starting to see some consistent, solid contact against Penta. Two big swings, one of those over dead center wall. And that one well struck by Rodriguez. You start to ask that question of, do we pull in another arm? Do we buy ourselves some time here to allow our offense to work? Or do we, we, do we show our cards here? First pitch swinging and coming in to charge for it is Mariah Pinta. That's Correction, Isis Tresvik. It's the challenge of SEC play. It's the challenge of conference play. The part of this season, you're tired. You've been traveling. You've been playing a lot of ball. You're trying to keep arms healthy and not overwork them. But you're also, you're not trying to show all your stuff so early. At 115 pitches now after that one is fouled off by Sophia Nugent. Nugent, who you mentioned, hit that home run to get Tennessee on the board first back in the second inning. Nice change of pace there from Maddie Pinta in for strike two. This is an arm I think they'll have to utilize also the rest of this weekend. So what Pinta's learning now, I think she's going to have to adjust on for the next two days. And Nugent gets a hold of that one. And oh my goodness, her second home run of the game, Sophia Nugent. Seeing the ball well, an 0-2 count, and sends it out. This is the second time that Nugent has had two strikes, battles her way through an at-bat, and doesn't just find her way on base. Gets herself all the way home. Two bombs this evening on two strike counts. This is virtually the exact same pitch, Tiffany, up and in. This is Power Alley for Sophia Nugent. In her follow-up start. It got better as the weekend wore on as Julia Kutsianopoulos opts out and that ends the inning, but not before Tennessee adds a couple more. Did an excellent job, one hit a piece. And Gacho going straight to work here in the bottom of the sixth. She moves fast in the circle. She's got a quick pace. She'll force you to get ready in the box quick. Attacks the zone. Already two Ks since stepping into the circle. I think there's Four, something five, to be six. said for this pace of play too, Tiff. There, I, I can relate, I was never a pitcher, but I can relate to the fact that the more you kind of lull on the mound, you start to think too much, there's room to overanalyze. And for Gotchel, she is truly rip and go. She doesn't overthink it, she gets ready on the mound and immediately fires to home plate. Allows her, to, her body just to be reactionary, it relies on that muscle memory. You, you kind of saw Pickens start to overthrow, overanalyze, overthink. You saw the adjustments that were trying to be made, but it was just too much. And for Gotchel, so fluid. Well, sometimes you think about that change of pace and how it can kind of interrupt or disrupt timing as Batters are facing her for the first time. But she's got a, a nice groove, and, and we've said it before, as the coaching staff mentioned, hey, the faster she's working, usually the better.
She's ahead in the count, one, two, to Amelia Leach. Leach, who reached on an error, struck out looking her last time up. Pulls that one foul and out of play. Amelia Leck, excuse me, I'm thinking about the, <laughs> the defensive changes in the outfield with the Leach sisters for Tennessee, Gabby and Alana. The twins out in the outfield as Amelia Leck now has two balls and two strikes. Well, she wanted that change up on the outer corner, didn't get the call. And Leach sister. And the two other sisters, Aubrey and Kelsey, who were great as well, wearing a Tennessee uniform to play for Karen Weekly as well. First full count here for Gottschall. Like grounds it foul. This is a nice battle. I leach hit the plate eight pitches so far. She took two change-ups, tough takes on the outer corner, a borderline pitch. I think could have gone both ways. This one pulled and lined out to left. Two away. Freshman Gabby Leach out of the Woodlands, Texas. Pete Gottschall feels confident knowing that her defense is going to back her up. We speak, spoke of how effective and efficient they've been. 974 fielding percentage coming into tonight's game. And they've stepped up their level of play as that's got to be a sense of relief as a pitcher. You know that if it's put into play, the eight behind you or seven behind you are going to back you up. Grounder, a diving effort there from Destiny Rodriguez. Trying to stop it from going up the middle. We're running it out. And a two out base hit for Isis Tresvik. Doesn't over swing, doesn't have to. Chopper right up the middle of the field. This is only the second hit that Gotchel's given up against Auburn. First pitch swinging he is Mariah Pinta and lifts it in to center field. And that ends the inning. Well, Tennessee, as they try and extend their win streaks both throughout the season and on the road as a new pitcher in the circle for Auburn. Annabelle Weidra now takes over the junior out of Hoover. Mila, who stands in the plate at the plate. Two balls and no strikes. And about Weidra. The junior coming in and just looking at what she offers up that scouting report. You see what, Aaron? A lot of spin. Already starting to see the ball move east to west. She'll really rely on that curve. It's a different type of spin than what we see from Penta, who works hard and high up in the zone. This one's going to tail down and away or down and into you. She'll work a lot of east to west here. Well, Mickey Dean comes out after three straight balls thrown from Weidra. Just having a quick conversation. Hey, still within striking distance of this fourth rank. Tennessee Lady Balls team. Yeah, he, he needs this arm to throw strikes at this point, allowing the defense to do work. We, we've bragged so much on the defense of both of these squads. 
but giving up free bases doesn't allow the defense to do their job. Can't defend a walk. Taking all the way, there's a strike from Weidra. Miller, who single her last time up in the nine hole spot. to walk the batter to lead it off here in the top of the seventh. Well, Saturday, number seven, Van. Back here on the plains and Kiki Malloy, the leadoff batter, who's gone over so far today. Walked her first time up. Off speed just low. Yeah, for, for Tennessee right now, gathering as much information as you can. Seeing a new arm for the first time. Show bunt and take strike two. Well, Kiki Malloy, we know her to be an offensive juggernaut. This is what she does at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. When she's in Knoxville, she feels right at home as she should. On the road, however, it's been a different story for her. It's an interesting stat. I think anyone feels a little more confident and at home on their home field. Got your home crowd, you know the turf, you know the field really well. I don't know, I'm still threatened by this bat no matter where she's playing, if I'm being honest. 100% agreed. <laughs> the speed's all always American, there. All-American, the home run yeah. leader. Yeah. She's yeah. got speed, she's got all the skills that you'd want. And they continue trying to chase down records or she hangs up her uniform. Of course, comes from an athletic family. Father played in the NFL 15 seasons. Her mother was a All-American track athlete. Sister played softball as well. Kiki Malloy, who has helped to establish herself as one of the top players in the country. Remember, she was a finalist for the National Player of the Year a season ago and also was in contention for SEC Player of the Year. This one up. And you try to figure out who's going to get to it, and it drops. Some miscommunication in the infield between Weidra and Anna Woolers. And Kiki Malloy is standing at first. Mueller moves to second. Another look at it here. Be interesting to see how this error is awarded. This is straight up a communication issue between Wallers at third base and Weidra. You want to see your third baseman take charge here, ask for the ball, call that ball, and allow your pitcher to step out entirely.
So it goes down in the scoring book as an error on the pitcher. Runners at first and second, no outs here in the top of the seventh, and Zeta Pooney, the designated player, is at the plate. Pooney, who singled her last time up, also was aboard safely with a walk back in the third. Pooney, another athlete that's Got loads of talent, incredibly skilled. Twenty-three RBI on the season. That pitch outside and just making sure that Mueller stays put to throw down the second. A really decisive swing from Pooney. I love watching her at bats. Lower body stays locked in. She's got a beautiful eye at the plate. You don't see her chase often. And this one past the shortstop and another run comes across for Tennessee. is right in the wheelhouse of Zeta Pooney. I mentioned the decisiveness of that swing. She was even a little early. The statistician can, can figure that out for us because in the history tonight, of we'll, softball. We'll, in the, in the history of softball, yeah, you know, just a little homework project, you know? <laughs> Casual, it's not a ton of data you'll have to sift through. I just know in my playing experience alone, when that leadoff is walked, ooh, more times than not, She's scoring. And it's so interesting because, I mean, there are some common things that you hear from coaches, and that is one that is repeated in just about every conversation that you have, is that you don't want to allow the leadoff runner aboard. You don't want to give them free passes and free opportunities, and here, no outs. Two runners on, McKenna Gibson. One of the top RBI producers swings at this one in the center field. There's Michaela Packer. Thought about tagging up. Instead, the runner stays put at second base. And the first out of the inning is recorded. Meanwhile, I should have had like a little uh, change jar, Aaron, for as many times as you said, don't put the lead on runner up. <laughs> You're gonna start tallying and how that that's up. that's a no-no, yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. It's so deflating as a defense too, right? You wanna attack that hitter, you wanna go after him, your defense wants to support you. They can't do anything with a walk. Riley West re-enters the ball game and sees strike one. Remember, she let off last inning with a solo shot. Tennessee put up two in the second. Then after a couple of silent innings, put up another two runs in the one spot here in the seventh. Missed some time. Didn't play in that opening series against Mizzou. And right back out in the center field. Packer busy once more, and it's two away. So Weidra inducing back-to-back -back fly balls.
Destiny Rodriguez standing in. Rodriguez, first pitch swinging. This one lifted to the outfield. Packer is there once more. And that ends the inning for Tigers. The catcher, Aubrey Lizenby, leading it off here. And Lizenby drills it to left field, in and out of the glove of Riley West. So the leadoff runner, or batter, is aboard for the Auburn Tigers. Lizenby, who has been the spirit and energy queen tonight yes. for the Tigers, trying to get a rally going. This young woman has so much spark. This ball is laced. A leaping effort from Riley West in left field, unable to glove it, kicks off the heel. She stands up at second. If you're going to spark a rally, that is exactly how it looks. And there it goes against Riley West. Meanwhile, Aubrey Lizabee, who has been very decisive since she's been at the plate, Two pitches or less she's seen in all three ABs, and that one allows her to get to second base. Pinch hit her in now. At the plate is Millie Roberts. Roberts one for six this season as a pinch hitter. And the sophomore with a two nothing count. Both have been tough to hit tonight. We'll see if the Tigers can capitalize with the leadoff on. This one in the foul territory near the Auburn dugout. And Kutsianopoulos is there, one away. Back to the top of the order with Anna Woolers, Karen Weekly looking on. Capshaw delivers ball one. pitch in for strike well now this lineup rolling over entering into probably the most dangerous territory one through nine on deck McCreary with a triple tonight but beyond just this evening from a body of work standpoint all season long the next four hitters have been so consistent a lot of production for Auburn The 2-2, two -two. Willers staying alive. Willers at the top of that list, leads the team in average. Lee's off of that one, draws a full count. Remember, Waller's ones that took the 
hit by pitch off the hand, the end of the bat. We had that review challenged by Karen Weekly. Pulled once more, this time it drops into right field. And runners at the corners now with just one out. And this Tiger team threatening. First base hit of the night for Anna Woolers. Well, the challenge for Auburn, according to Mickey Dale coming into this weekend, is hey, we've we've had good offense. We've swung the bat well this season. Our struggle is executing. With runners on, how can we finish the job? Finish an inning. We get things going, we start to rev the engine, and we can't actually get the car in motion. We have got to execute when it matters. That's the first hit that Auburn has had with a runner on. So Riley McNeighbor standing over at first base as the pinch runner. And KK McCreary, who you referenced earlier, had that triple her first of the season, is back at the plate. Can they find a way to be productive? with runners on, continue to pass the bat here. Down four runs. This one skied into left field. Riley West is there and too shallow for the runner to tag up. And now Auburn down to their final out. Up to the back. This pitching staff, who has been so stingy all season long, giving up four hits tonight, just one run. Coming in at the best ERA in the nation. Now trying to close the door here on Auburn to extend their winning streak. They've already won 12, 10 in a row on the road. 18 straight overall. One, two to Packer. And kids are looking a strikeout to end the ball game as Tennessee on the road, picks up a 5-1.